About two months ago, I picked up this Skoda Octavia Estate. After ages of looking at all the different options, trying to work out what to get, decided to go with this car. There's already loads of videos about the Octavia on YouTube, but none of them quite gave me the information that I needed to figure out what to get. So I thought I'd put together this little video showing the reasons why I got a Skoda Octavia Estate. I needed this car for quite a specific use case. Um, I do video production around the London area and so I needed something that was big enough to fit on my kit in but not crazy big that parking and getting it around became an absolute nightmare. I also need something that just works well as a day-to-day -day car and so I didn't want something like a van that's only got two or three seats. I think for the money this is pretty much the best value vehicle you can get at least for what I needed it for. Let's dig into some of the reasons. The three reasons that I chose this car were practicality, comfort and driving experience and affordability. Let's start with practicality. Like I was saying, I carry a lot of kit with me for work and I needed a vehicle that would fit it all in but also be able to hide it all away. Underneath the load cover, you can fit 640 litres of stuff into the boot of this car. That's about as big as it gets without getting a giant SUV or a van, but 640 litres meant absolutely nothing to me. So I'll try and show it a little bit more practically. It's also worth noticing that it's not just about the raw literage of a boot, but also how usable that space is. One of the great things with this car is these areas on the side, which means you can fit much longer items in than most similar sized boots. So this is pretty much all my kit and it all fits in, no problem at all. This is three big light cases, my two toolboxes full of cables, a bunch of light stands and poles, a tripod, some soft boxes, my camera bag plus a couple of other rucksacks, a massive microphone, some sandbags, and even one of these giant C stands. You can fit a lot in, and all of that gets hidden away. So that kind of ticks the storage space box for me. The other thing with practicality is seating space, how easily you can fit people in. And the Skoda Octavia is about as good as it gets for this, this size of car. I'm just over six foot, and this seat is in my normal driving position, and I can easily fit in the back, like no problem at all. I think it's pretty rare for cars of this price and size to be able to get away with fitting five people that are all six foot tall in it. It's really spacious in the front as well. Um, you've got loads of headroom. It's just generally a really nice place to be. And that moves on to the next thing, which is comfort. Because this isn't just for lugging loads of equipment around. Practicality is great. And that was probably the most important thing for me. But this is also a vehicle that's being used just day to day as like a normal car as well. Um, I'm not just putting equipment in it and taking it to shoots, I'm also using it to get around life. And so I want it to be comfortable, I want it to be nice, I want it to feel nice inside. Um, and the Octavia just does a really good job of that. The whole car feels like it's put together well. All the materials are nice, um, the seats are really nice, particularly in this SEL version. I think one of the really cool things is just how minimal the design is, particularly in the front. Um, there's not loads of distracting buttons everywhere. There's a few nice buttons for the things that you need quickly, other than aircon. That's the annoying thing. Aircon you still have to do through the, through the touchscreen. But other than that, everything that you need to get to quickly can be pressed with a button. But then there's still a nice big touchscreen to go in and do all the main stuff, have your CarPlay, have your Android Auto. In terms of actually driving the car, which is what cars are mainly for, does a great job as well. I got the 150 horsepower petrol manual, and it's great. It's, it's more than enough power for day to day. It never feels slow, never feels sluggish. You can accelerate easily. It's not as quick as the VRS version, which you can get if you want to be a little bit more sporty, um, but it's fine. It does the job really, really well. You won't have any problems at all with this one. Fitting into this comfort category as well, I guess, is just what it's like to, to get this car around day to day. And although it's a big car, you can fit those in as we looked at, it's not giant. And that's quite nice. That was one of the things that I really wanted. A lot of the cars, and I guess if you include vans as well, a lot of the vehicles that can carry lots of stuff are usually huge. And that's fine when you're driving along, but when you've got to get into tight parking spaces, fit through small gaps, drive around narrower roads, um, get around a multi-story car park, having something that's not huge makes a really big difference. And this car just feels like the perfect size. It's easy to park, it's easy to move around. It's useful having things like the front and back parking sensors that makes it a lot easier when you're parking you can pay extra if you want to get a reverse camera as well but i don't think you need it it's, it's very easy to move this car around comfortable works really well the other thing this car does really well is technology and just all the little extras that make this car stand out that bit more 
you get all the standard stuff like USB-C ports everywhere. So there's two in the front, there's two in the back. You even get one up by the rear view mirror as well, which is really useful if you want to stick a dash cam in the car. You get heated seats in the front, a cooled glove box to keep drinks cold and stuff in the summer. Um, you get wireless Apple CarPlay, so your phone just connects to the car when you jump in. You get keyless entry and keyless locking, so you don't need to get your keys out of your pocket at all. It's got two really nice screens. This middle one gives you all the controls and maps and music. And then the digital dash lets you show a few different views and various bits of information. This version comes with the adaptive cruise control as well, which works really nicely. You set your maximum speed and then it keeps you a safe distance from the car in front. So when they slow down, it slows you down and so we're speeding up until it reaches whatever speed limit you've set. I like the Skoda Connect app as well. It's pretty basic, but it lets you do things like check from wherever you are, things like the car's location, the fuel level, whether it's locked or not, those kind of things. Skoda really stand out for their nifty little extra features as well. So you get things like the ice scraper in the fuel filler cap, you get a parking ticket holder, built-in funnel for the screen wash, this little hook to hold up the floor in the boot, and then the best one, the famous Skoda umbrellas in the front doors. Overall, day-to-day -day life with this car is pretty great. The final thing on my list was cost and affordability. Now, Skoda used to be known as being a budget brand. Their reputation has gone up a ton over the last few years and they've become a lot more reliable, but also a lot more expensive. And so one of these brand new is probably about 27, 28,000 pounds. You can pick up one that's a couple of years old and still in really great condition for less than 22, 23 grand, which I think is pretty good for how much value you're getting for that money. The other thing that impacts cost is the fuel, the engine efficiency. I have no idea what the other engines are like. They make a diesel version. That's going to be way better for this kind of thing. But the 150 horsepower, 1.5 litre petrol, which is what I've got, will easily get you 35 miles per gallon plus driving around town. And I've clocked 50, 55 miles per gallon when on the motorway. So a full tank of fuel gets you quite a long way. Stick all of that together and it makes this car a pretty solid option for someone like me. It also just looks really nice. I don't really talk about looks at all. But in a world of SUVs and really tall cars, it's quite nice having something that's a little bit more sleek. You sit a bit lower to the ground. I think it just works really, really well. If you're looking for a car that has loads of space, but isn't crazy big or difficult to move around, has got all the tech and has a really nice high quality inside and looks really great from the outside, isn't too expensive to buy and isn't too expensive to run day to day, then I reckon the Skoda Octavia is pretty much one of the best options there is. Hopefully this video has been helpful. If you have any questions, let me know. I'll try and do my best to get back to them and can easily make a follow-up video for anything at all, if that's useful. But otherwise, hope you guys have a good day. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you soon.